warning and welcome. Small children should possibly not read this problem. That's actually just a joke. It's just that, well, in the world of buoyancy, this this is a horrible, mean, nasty question. B, D, E, F, and G. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, don't, don't you love it when the teacher gives you and says, I'm only going to give you one question, and then you get it, and it's A, B, C, D, F, G. I, I know. I'm the guy who does that all the time. So, Anyway, let's see if we can't get into this one. I consider this to be one of those, if you figure this question out, then you should have no buoyancy problems at this point. Uh, I'm going to go to another sheet of paper because I obviously don't have room right on here. If you need to, you may pause the video here. I'll set it here. I'll shake the camera a little less. And then uh, if you want to write it down, and we'll look at whatever F and G are later. So let's just get to here for now. All right, let's actually get back to problems. Let's get some blank paper. And I'm about to run out of blank paper. I've been making like four videos today already. So let's get into this. This problem says... There's a survivor of a cruise line disaster. So I'm guessing Mr. Titanic here has just run afoul. And it says that this survivor has got on a piece of styrofoam luckily floating in the water. Let's draw that piece of styrofoam. So here's my piece of styrofoam. Dun, dun, dun. So there's my piece of styrofoam. I should draw it pretty square because it actually says that this styrofoam is 2 meters by 2 meters and it is 0 0.0860 meters or 8.6 centimeters thick in terms of this way. Well, I want you to go ahead and think of something. Why would a problem go to the specifics to give you all this information? Length, width, and height. Let's go ahead and do something. Let's go ahead and find the volume, and I'm, I'm going to write volume of the object. I'm going to go ahead and find the volume of that styrofoam. So let's see what we got here. We got 0 .0860 times huh, 2 times 2 times 4. So my volume is 0 .344, 0 .344 meters cubed. So there's my volume in this problem. All right, well, that's awesome. Let's see. Uh, it tells me one more thing. The bottom is 025 meters is submerged. If you go back to my earliest problems, I told you what happens. If you see a problem where something is partially submerged, that means we're going to end up using this AH substituted into the equation where H is how much is under the water. So let's go back. So I already know that at some point, I ain't saying where yet, I know I'm going to substitute that for volume, AH. And it's telling me H in this problem. So here's my water line. So my question is H, how much of it is underwater? Well, it says 0 0.025 meters, point zero two five meters of this object is actually underwater. Okay. Now it says one more thing, just in case the problem wasn't hard enough. Someone is standing on top of it. So this is why I made my reference. Jack. Actually no he drowned. Oh, if you never watched Titanic, I'm sorry, I just rounded the uh chick with the uh red hair actually survived. So anyway I guess we should put her on there. So it does happen to say that the survivor has a mass of 64 kilograms. Now, it doesn't give us a mass of styrofoam, and I hope that we're kind of supposed to be ignoring that. Right now, no. I just read the problem. We're not going to be ignoring it. So they have took this problem and ramped it up a little bit harder. And so now what this problem wants you to do is this. This problem wants you to draw a diagram. That's what step one says. It's kind of like an AP test here. Step one says draw a free body diagram for this, pers for this person in the raft. Well, we already know that going up, this raft is in water. We know there's a buoyant force. This is where most people screw this question up. Can I say screw up in a video? Oh, well, it's too late. I've already done. You see there's two masses in this problem. 
There's a mass for the survivor. Some will write MSG. Am I the only one who suddenly got in the mood to go eat Chinese food? But anyway, there's a mass of the survivor, an MG for the survivor, but here's the catch. There's also an MG for the raft. M-R-G. So I'm going to add that in. There's two weights, and that's what complicates this problem. Now, it doesn't complicate a whole lot. My big equation, my big equation. I don't even know if I need this right now, but my big equation would be B minus mass survivor G minus, because it's also down, mass of RAF G equals zero. Now, I don't even know if I'm going to use this in this problem yet, but that would be my big equation for the problem. And we'll see. We might need it here in a second. I'm going to have to grab another sheet of paper. I am using it up right now. So, anyway, I need to keep this handy, though, as I begin working on it. So, all it said in part one was draw a diagram. Well, check. We have successfully drawn a diagram. Step B says, so really, step A was nothing but draw this diagram. Wow, it's just like an AP. Step B says, <laughs> write an equation for it. Well, in that case, step B, we did it. B minus M survivor G minus MRG. Hey, if Jack would have made it and got on here with her, we'd do mass of Jack G on there as well. But anyway, so there's what we've kind of got in this problem. You just, if there's something else in it, you just minus an MG for it the whole way out. So that's nothing to be alarmed about. That's why I said this problem's great. This problem says that it's in water, throws this in. It says that the water has a density. I'm going to write fluid. The fluid has a density of 1,025 kilograms per meter cubed, and we're going to need that fluid density that this is floating in. So they are in salt water. Well, the good thing is that's heavier water, so it should be a little bit easier to float in this problem. All right, well, let's kind of move on a little bit now with this thing. We've got pretty much everything we need, and it says find B. Well, let's start thinking about it. I could find B if I knew these two masses. I know the mass of the survivor, but it never told me the mass of the raft. Well, I can't find B going this way, so let's try this to find B. Let's, get, let's go back to what B is. B is equal to, very first buoyancy equation I taught you, rho F, V, F, G. But wait a second. I said something. This raft is not underwater. That means my volume is just AH. Uh-oh. That means I can rewrite this as AHG. And wait, I know the density of the fluid. It says 1,025. The area of the raft, the raft is 2 by 2. So the area is 4. It told me the height that it's, or the depth that it's in the water, it's 0, 025 times 9.8. Holy cow. I've got B. I always like ain't B, by the way. Just don't make shows like that anymore, do they? I hope everybody watching this knows what I'm talking about. 0, 0.25 times 9.8. And I've got 1,004.5. Well, I'm just going to round it to 1,005 newtons. So there. I've found my buoyant force now. Part D says find the weight of the survivor using the weight of the survivor. Here's what it says. It wants us to find the weight of the styrofoam. So let's go back to that equation written in red. And what we're looking for, and we could find the mass of the styrofoam. It doesn't matter to me. But it says find the weight. So we're going to actually look for mg. So b minus mass of the survivor g mass of the raft G equals zero. And I don't know what I'm saying. It told us the mass of the survivor. It wants us to find the mass of the raft or the weight of the raft. Well, we already know B is 1,005. Minus the survivor, it said, is 64. Minus MRG. So we're looking for that MRG. 
and that's going to be pretty easy to do. So 1,005 minus 64 times 9.8, 377.8. So there is the answer to that question. Good grief. Part E. Let's do it. Part E says find the density of the styrofoam. Well, if I want to find the density of the styrofoam, let's think about it. I need the mass and the volume of the styrofoam. Well, I already know the volume of the styrofoam. We found that just for the giggles of it at the very beginning, 344. Four. 0.344. We've got that. But wait a second. We don't have the mass of the styrofoam. Oh, wait a second. We do. All we got to do is divide by 9.8. We've got our mass. So let's see. Mass of that raft would be equal to 377.8 divided by 9.8 equals 38.6. So 38.6 kilograms. Don't know why I wrote that unit. So 38.6 divided by 0.344, and that's equal to 112.2. So we've got a density of 112.2 kilograms per meters cube, which is much less than 1,000, which explains why this thing is floating in the first place. So I'm glad we were able to kind of uh, figure that question out. Now, there's actually a B and a C part for that, but I don't consider them to be like the super most important. Um, all B, or excuse me, the only thing part E, if you're working these problems, or part F, ask on your own, it wants you to go back and find B if the raft was completely submerged. Well, if the raft was completely submerged, it would just be the same equation except you just plug in the volume of the object for this F that's in there. All right, so a last rundown and review of all things buoyancy. In 30 seconds or less. Buoyancy. Sometimes you can work the problem just by using that. B minus mg equals zero. If something else stands on it, minus mg, minus mg, minus mg. B itself is nothing but rho f vf g. If something is underwater, change that vf to a vo. And if something is only partially submerged in the water, change that vo to an ah. There, end of story. This mg that's over here. The only thing, if a problem gives you the mass, hey, right here you go. Go straight for it. If it doesn't give you mass, then all you need to do is write rho o v o g in its place. This is it. Just based on this little bit of knowledge, you should be able to assemble most buoyancy questions at this point. The only thing you might get tricked is a question with a balloon. Well, if you've got a question with a balloon, all you've got to remember is one thing. The density of the fluid would be your air, and that would be 1.225. There, there's your only trick if it's a balloon question. The math of a balloon is still the exact same set of equations. Matter of fact, I'll go and tell you. A balloon would be completely submerged, so a balloon would be this VOG. It would be this version of the buoyancy equation. That is all that you've got to do. And again, if there's more than one object, just keep writing minus mg's. What if the object is actually like a balloon that's going up? Well, if you've got a balloon that's rising or something on the bottom of the ocean floor that's going up, just instead of equal to zero, set it equal to ma, and then you've got your answer for the problem. But here, this is beautiful. I've never wrote it just like this before, but there. That is buoyancy in a nutshell, enough to succeed at least. But anyway, peace out later. Uh, i got to go run. So anyway, literally like I run and choose. Hold on, y'all, until we're on. Anyway, so bye.